Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Nicholas Holt stars in this biopic of the legendary fantasy author Tolkien. When his mother dies, J.R.R. Tolkien, played as an adult by Nicholas Holt, is put under the guardianship of Father Francis Morgan, played by Colm Meany, who sent him to King Edward's school for his education. There, Tolkien befriends Anthony Boyle's Geoffrey Smith, Patrick Gibson's Rob Gilson, and Tom Glyn Carney's Christopher Wiseman, forming together the Tea Club and Barovian Society, where they share their love of poetry and the arts. Meanwhile, Tolkien falls in love with Edith Bratt, played by Lily Collins, who lives in the same boarding house, but Tolkien's relationships will be tested when he and his friends are sent to fight in the First World War, ultimately shaping the author he would become. J.R.R. Tolkien is easily one of the defining authors of the 20th century. His work like The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit have helped shape and inspire countless fantasy writers through generations. His legacy cannot be underestimated, and his influence on the fantasy genre is almost incalculable, not just in terms of literature, but on film as well, because the adaptations of his work, notably Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, have helped reshape modern blockbuster filmmaking. So it becomes very understandable why they made a film about Tolkien's life. In fact, the question is more, why haven't they done so before? And the answer may become obvious as we go through this review, but I'd imagine a big one is the fact that this new movie does not have the involvement or participation of Tolkien's estate, who has already put out a statement, in fact, saying that they've disavowed this film sight unseen, claiming that they do not approve or endorse of it in any way, which is totally un understandable in my opinion because I've seen this movie and I don't approve of it either. Tolkien's gift as a writer was his ability to create worlds, to conjure up such fully formed fantasy environments that they almost seem inhabitable. To open up one of his books is to transport yourself into Middle-earth, be it the Shire or Mordor or everywhere in between. And Tolkien was exceptionally well read. He was very well versed in the mythology and folklore that is the basis of fantasy and used elements of countless different cultures and made them his own in his stories. And he was fascinated by language, the way that words sound, the things that they evoke, the almost texture of the individual syllables as he was creating his own languages. There's a great film to be made about that person, but Tolkien the movie isn't it. In fact, if you're fascinated by Tolkien's etymology, the most you'll ever really get out of that in this movie is when Derek Jacobi turns up in the third act as Oxford Professor Wright to spend a couple of minutes pontificating about the sounds of words associated with trees. And if that sounds riveting, that sums up many of the problems with this biopic. Tolkien, as a movie, doesn't make a lot of inventions when it comes to his life. In fact, it sticks fairly close to the facts of what we know about him. No, the issue is that it does not bring his story to life. It seems to tell it in the most flat way it could possibly do so. And this comes down to even Tolkien himself in this movie, who comes across largely as an awkward young man with only a couple of trace elements of the author that we would eventually know him as. Even at the end of the movie, it doesn't seem like he's the fully formed author that we would eventually come to respect. And that's not meant to be a dig on Nicholas Holt's performance. He's only playing what he's given here, but he just comes across as being very, very blank. It doesn't seem like there's really a lot of personality to this movie, or really any kind of telling. It seems to go through the motions, but without any sort of conviction or passion about it. I think one of the major reasons for this, as a film and as a character, is that the movie downplays Tolkien's Catholicism, which was a core tenant of his being. It's something that shows up in his work time and time again. And obviously it's not completely eliminated because he's someone that spent many of his years being raised by a priest, but nevertheless, it never becomes as prominent as you would think it would be. And that makes it even more awkward when the movie suddenly leans upon it at moments. So he's talking to the father about his relationship with Edith and the father objects to it by saying, she's not even a Catholic. And you go, wait, what? because that line comes completely out of nowhere. There was nothing before that, establishing that as a stake, as a conflict. If you're going to make that a crucial theme in the movie, 
make it so. There are several instances in this film of really awkward dialogue that seems to be retroactively establishing things that should have set up earlier. There's a moment where Edith explains, oh, I spent all my years being cooped away playing piano, which would have been nice to see before she mentions it. It's got a lot of weird, awkward moments like that, which comes down to the fact that the script seems much more intent on explaining through the dialogue than actually conveying it on screen. This is full of that terrible biopic trope of having talents that are very hard to depict visually, so they just have characters going, you're so remarkable, your gift for language, your ability to create poetry. All that kind of clumsy, awkward dialogue. So even though much of this did actually happen, and there isn't that much fabrication going on here, a lot of this movie just ends up ringing false because it adheres so rigidly to convention and the form of these kind of genre pictures. While on the subject of Edith Bratt, who would ultimately become Tolkien's inspiration for his elven characters, I think the love story element here is one of the film's strongest parts, in large part because of Lily Collins' performance, which is genuinely charming as she affects a really great English accent and she has solid chemistry with Holt that elevates their scenes together. Some of the best moments in this film are simply them talking to each other and suddenly the closest it gets to capturing the spirit of Tolkien's work, particularly one very early scene where they're in a restaurant which is fairly lengthy and it breaks down Tolkien's approach to language and building worlds and makes it intimate and personal and makes it very romantic at the same time. And also quite fun, the way that, that scene closes with Edith picking out sugar cubes and throwing them into the other patrons' hats. That's a genuine real-life detail. They really did do that. And it feels like they've actually made that come to life in a way that so much of the rest of the film simply does not. And it's unfortunate, I think, that Collins isn't really used more. She kind of gets pushed into the background, which is especially puzzling if you know about the relationship that he had with Edith in their early years and the way that they were forcibly separated for the good of his education and the way that she went off with another suitor, that element of the movie naturally would lend itself to a dramatic love triangle, but not in this movie, which largely just plays it out on the sidelines without any kind of drama to it whatsoever. That's the problem with this movie. It's content with simply telling the facts of Tolkien's life, but it tells it like a monosyllabic reading of a Wikipedia synopsis. The other part of Tolkien's life which this focuses upon is his friendship with the TCBS and how they would form the foundations of the fellowship that he would go on to write about. And the movie spends a lot of time with this group, be it them playing rugby together or discussing the finer points of literature and poetry, but for all that, they still feel indistinct and not very well characterized to such an extent that I genuinely had a really hard time telling them apart in all honesty. They're all written in exactly the same way of this upper class youthful kid running around about how their art is going to change the world. They're pretty much just stopping short of climbing up on tables and exclaiming carpe diem. There's a lot of dead poet society influence in these scenes, but for all of that, they just feel like they hew very close to caricature and types, with maybe the only exception being Jeffrey, who is shyer than the other two and is a little bit more interested in his poetry and gets more prominence later in the movie. And this hurts the film hugely in the World War I material because this group is meant to be a representation of a whole generation of men men who would ultimately not fully fulfill their potential because of the tragedy of that war. And 
those scenes are probably some of the best in Tolkien, and the movie actually uses Tolkien's experience of the Battle of the Somme as a framing device. Much of the film plays out in flashback while Tolkien is racing to find Jeffrey, but it feels like the reason that they've used that framing device is because it's the only part of the movie that actually feels like it has any kind of urgency to it, and some of the war material is definitely very striking on a visual level, the way that they try to conjure up parallels between Tolkien's work, it genuinely seems hellish. And some of the scenes are really harrowing, but the emotional impact is blunted because I didn't really get a sense of knowing these characters, which is a huge shame. The other issue is that I thought that this movie, in terms of its structure, would more resemble another recent Fox Searchlight movie, Goodbye Christopher Robin, which covered A.A. Milne. That movie was very much about Milne's trauma and how that defined his creation of Winnie the Pooh and how that affected his treatment of Christopher Robin. That was a huge part of that movie, so I was expecting Tolkien to also cover that subject about how the war greatly influenced his writing and how that would have a huge effect on the surviving members of the TCBS. And the movie doesn't really cover that. The Battle of the Somme is largely the climax of the movie and everything after that is epilogue. It skirts over that, which I think is half the story. The Goodbye Christopher Robin comparison is also important in another key area because while that film covered Winnie the Pooh, whose rights currently reside with Disney, it never felt like it was hamstrung by that fact, whereas Tolkien is absolutely strangled by its own right struggles. Because it wasn't made with the participation of Tolkien's estate, and because the film rights, The Lord of the Rings, currently reside with Warner Brothers, that means this movie has to engage in this borderline absurd ducking game of trying to avoid referencing anything from Tolkien's work specifically, because they can't use names, they can't use places, they can't use anything. And so even as an audience member, I was sat there watching this movie and I felt like I had a lawyer breathing down the back of my neck. I can't imagine what that must have been like for the filmmakers, given they had to play it so coy. They are trying so desperately to not be sued. There is exactly one reference in specific in the entire movie, and it's the last word, literally. Hobbit. And I'd imagine the only reason that they got away with that is because it's the title of the book. That's a lot, otherwise everything else is just little sly nods and allusions. Like one of the TCBS saying, no one wants to listen to a six hour story about a ring. Do you get it? There's a sequence where Tolkien and Edith go to an opera house and they don't manage to get in, but they manage to sneak in underneath and play around with the props and Edith grabs a big ring. Incidentally, the opera they didn't manage to get in to see, Wagner's Ring Cycle over and over again. Even when Tolkien is imagining fancy figures on the battlefield, it's always done in a way where they can safely argue against it being specific to anything, so that's not Smaug, that's just a dragon. That's not Aragorn, that's just knights battling against each other. It's all sort of non-specific things, non-committal, because they simply cannot afford to be. And so that renders this movie almost pointless, in my opinion, and it's understandable now why no one has attempted this before, because how do you make a movie about an author's work where you can barely even discuss it in any real detail? A big a part of the appeal of these kinds of movies is seeing the creation of the characters that we come to know. And obviously this movie can't do that, aside from little tiny moments, if you have a very devout knowledge of the author, that really robs the movie of any kind of insight it could offer on Tolkien, and even worse, it renders him generic. Because when you take away all those things, when you take away the actual detail of someone's life like this, what you end up with 
is just revealing this as simply being a bunch of tired old biopic tropes that we've seen numerous times before and it gets to such an extent where they've wiped away so much of the identifying features that it almost feels like it could have been made about anyone if you just replace the name here. Tolkien is a major letdown. There's no denying that he was a remarkable man, but you're scared to get any of that from this film, which seems content to flatten his life and remove so much of what made him unique and identifiable in the first place that it's dramatically inert. It's clear that the cast and filmmakers had the best of intentions, but when you're making a movie about an author and you can't even mention their work, what is even the point anymore? It just becomes dull and tedious. This movie has very serious pacing issues to the point where it feels like watching Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy would be much quicker than watching this two hour movie that often resembles a TV drama that has accidentally wandered on the big screen. And while on that subject, if you do want to see a movie about Tolkien, just watch Peter Jackson's trilogy again. Maybe not his Hobbit films, but definitely his original Lord of the Rings films. I think they're far closer to getting the spirit of the author, his work, and his creation than anything in this movie because at least they can actually handle the subject and name the characters as opposed to this movie which is simply afraid of its own shadow. Tolkien is not a wisp of the author's genius even as it celebrates his creativity, telling the story of his formative years largely accurately but without conviction, managing to make one of the most influential figures of his time hopelessly boring. A large part of this is because the film for legal reasons can scarcely even utter or direct reference his creations, mostly reliant on vague illusions or fantasy sequences with copyright friendly knights and dragons to remind you who this is supposed to be based on. As a result, Holt's Tolkien is just an unformed awkward young man in the throes of love, both with Lily Collins' Edith, a tiny ray of light here, and with Art alongside the youthful cries of the TCBS, who is so indistinctly characterised that it robs the World War I scenes of their impact. Tolkien ultimately becomes a collection of biopic tropes so generic or unspecific that it becomes a test not to fall asleep, robbed of any kind of insight that would make this worth telling. If you like this review, then you can join my fellowship over at Patreon, where you can see my reviews early among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. Mm -hmm.